In this short video, we are going to take a look at the angular equivalent of Newton's third law. Recall from our class on linear kinetics that we had a typical CSUN student. As she is standing there talking to the phone, we have a force due to gravity that is pulling her in the downward vertical direction. I asked in this case if there was going to be an acceleration. You answered correctly that she was not accelerating if she wasn't moving. If she wasn't accelerating, that means that we were missing a force. The force we were missing was a contact force, specifically the ground reaction force. Newton's third law tells us that for every force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Those forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and acting on different bodies. Well, we can say the same thing about a torque. For every torque, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction torque. That torque is going to be equal in magnitude, opposite direction, and acting on a different body. Let's take a look at our soccer player here. Notice that his arms are swinging in an opposite direction from his legs. That's because as he runs, his legs are going to create a torque upon the pelvis. That torque is going to cause the pelvis to rotate, which needs to be counteracted by the arm swing. That's why the opposite arm and the opposite leg are in front while he runs. We can also say the same thing here about our tennis players. Which tennis player is going to have the more forceful backhand? Ignore for the moment that the one on the left is using both arms, while the one on the right is only using a single arm. Let's concentrate on their feet. Look at the tennis player on the right. As his upper body is rotating in the clockwise direction, his lower body is going to be rotating in the counterclockwise direction. This is because he is off the ground and the ground cannot create an additional torque. The tennis player on the left, on the other hand, can create a torque from the ground reaction force, which will create a stable base which will allow his upper body to rotate upon. Finally, let's take a look at somebody who's falling. As she's falling, neglect for the moment that she's holding her phone in her hand, and it's probably an earlier generation that's not going to survive getting wet. What way would she want to rotate her arms if her trunk was rotating in, let's say, a clockwise direction? Most people would assume that this would want to be a counterclockwise direction of her arms. But remember, for every torque, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction torque. So a counterclockwise rotation of her arms would create a further clockwise rotation on the torque, exacerbating her fall into the pool. If she would want to avoid getting wet, and she was pushed from behind, and her trunk started rotating in the clockwise direction, she would actually want to rotate her arms in the clockwise direction, and this would create a counterclockwise torque about the trunk, rotating it back posteriorly. Now, if we look at this from an angular momentum perspective, we could say that the arms are going to have a lot less moment of inertia compared to her trunk. Therefore, in order to effectively move her trunk in the posterior direction, she's going to have to swing her arms fairly rapidly. This is why a tightrope walker, for example, would use a very, very long pole. The long pole would have a relatively large moment of inertia, and therefore small rotations of the pole would lead to bigger rotations of the trunk, and they wouldn't be on top of a tightrope flapping that pole around very rapidly, which probably would not be very conducive of trying to move. So there you have it. There is a quick introduction to the angular equivalent of Newton's third law.